Clubhouse. Welcome to Friday Mana. My name is Jeremy Connell, and today I really want to talk to you about teamwork. It'll never cease to amaze me how God's work works in my life and how God works through the Word. Um, my last Mana was on change and how in the life of a Christian, change is never a bad thing. Is it a hard thing? Yes, but it's never bad. And what God has shown me this week is when we go through those change, when we go through those hard times, we always have a team around us. Um, the first teammate that I can always think of is God. God is always on your team. Like Ian said on Sunday, God walks with us through the path he has for us. And the other thing God showed me is not only is he on our team, but he has people in our lives, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that are going through very similar situations, similar things, not exactly the same, but they're there to help build us up, to step alongside us and walk with us in this journey with God. Um... The story that really brought that out to me in the, is, of course, in the Old Testament, and it's in the book of Nehemiah. Um, I really want to pick it up in chapter 4, but before I do that, let's kind of review what's happened before this. So, in Nehemiah 1, it starts off, Nehemiah finds out the walls of Jerusalem have been taken down there in shambles, and it tears his heart apart. But the first thing it, that he does is he fasts and prays to God. Prayer in chapter 1 is amazing, by the way. We don't have time for that now, but if you have time today, go and read it. It's not a long read, but his heart to God is just awesome. Okay, so that's chapter 1, prayer and fasting. Chapter 2, Nehemiah is down because of the wall. He goes in front of the king. He has a downward look. He looks sad, and the king asks him, what's up, right? Because that's a fence, an offense punishable by death, right? But he asks Nehemiah what's up because he cares for Nehemiah. And... At this point, Nehemiah sends up a quick bullet prayer and says, God, help me, right? He sends for his first teammate. He says, God, I need you here. And because God has Nehemiah, the king, sorry, let's back up. I'm jumping in front of myself. Because God has Nehemiah, Nehemiah has laid out a plan to go and rebuild the walls. He even has a time deadline. He says, I'll be back at this point. And because God has Nehemiah's back, the king not only lets Nehemiah go, but he gives him the supplies that he'll need and papers to get through the territories. The, the other things that happens at the end of chapter 2 is that Nehemiah goes and he surveys the damage of the walls in Jerusalem. And he does this at darkness. Now, I don't think he went at darkness to be sneaky or to not necessarily show everybody what he's found, but out of the understanding that there were enemies that didn't want that wall to be built, that they were just satisfied with that wall down. So he went and he surveyed the whole thing. In chapter 3, he's in Jerusalem and he's building up the remnant. He's building up his team, his people in Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. So they're, they're working, right? And there's progress shown. So they get together. Here's the plan. We're each going to build outside our own house. And there's progress that's being shown about the wall. The wall's starting to look better. It's not as damaged as it was. Now let me tell you something, when change happens, God, whether God is using that change to align your heart to His, to align our heart to His, or to form you and mold you and form you into the Christian He wants you to be, progress is going to be shown. And when the enemy sees progress, he doesn't like it, and opposition comes. So we're at that point, the wall's getting built up and oppositions come. And this is where we pick up in our passage today in chapter 4. So I just want to read the first three verses real quick. And then we'll talk about it. So it says, But it so happened when Sanballat heard that they were building the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish, stones that are burned? Now Tobiah and the Ammonites was beside him, and he said, Whatever they build, even if a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. When the enemy sees change, they're going to ridicule. They're going to say things that are meant to shoot you down, not build you up. Um, they're not on our team, obviously. That's going to happen in everything. But my favorite part of this story and of this message is the response. Because in verses 4 through 6, we see a response from Nehemiah and then a response from the team. Nehemiah's first response in 4 is he prays. And we're going to read that here in a minute. But he prays. And what he does is he gives the enemy to the person who has control over it all. He says, hey, God, I can't control what this person says, but you got it. Let's read what he says. He says, hear, O our God, for we are despised. 
turn their report reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. That's Nehemiah's response and the people's response is my favorite. Let's read this in verse 6. So we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height for the people had a mind to work. Nehemiah has set himself up with the perfect team, with God as his teammate and then the people of Jerusalem. Okay? And through this opposition, they're still working hard. He has that team. So just, I want you to know, in summing up, two things that we need to know. Whether you're going through change, whether there's something hard going into your life, the first thing you need to know is that God is always on your team. And he is always fighting to keep you on his team. Because we can walk away, right? We can say, God, I don't want this anymore. This is too hard. But God is always right behind us. And the moment we step back, he's like, all right, you're back on my team. Let's do this, right? We're, we're always, we can step away from his team, but he's always right there behind us. And the second thing is that there are people in your lives that God have, has put as your team to help you go through these changes, to help you get closer to God. The thing we have to be careful is we need to make sure that the people that are on our team are also on God's team. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, and I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for who you are. God, I pray that as we go out, God, that as we go through these changes, through these hard times in our lives, God, that you would just show us that you're always there, that you're walking with us, that you're molding us and shaping us into the person that you want us to be. And that's where we need to be. God, I just pray that you would just lead us down the path that you have for us. God, show us where we need to go. Share, show us that person that we need to share your love and your word of encouragement to. And I thank you for that. God, just bless this day. We give it to you. Go before us, we pray. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a good day, guys.